Kazakh crafts originated from everyday life and evolved alongside the people, changing with each new century, enriching and filling with new meaning. Traditional methods of making various home products, clothing, jewelry, and so on were carefully passed down from ancestors to descendants. Part of that precious folk heritage is the craft of weaving alasha, a carpet of woolen threads. Min. I was raised in a beautiful village. We learned about carpet weaving in our village from the third grade. Grandmothers would often gather to weave carpets. My mother was a hard-working woman. She worked with 10 kids to spin threads in the winter, and the children had used those threads to weave carpets in the summer. Our father died early. In order to pay for school, we were selling carpets. I am still appreciative of those carpets today. My mother sold one of those carpets to pay for school for my brother when he left to study, so we graduated from the institute. That's how mother's carpets helped us to find firm ground in the world. Carpet weaving is one of the Kazakh people's oldest crafts. According to history, Alasha is a product of the Bronze Age, which also absorbed the spirit of Saka culture. Archaeological excavations in the Kazakh steppes from 1929 to 1949 revealed the presence of various weaving techniques. This is called kalush and it is used in carpet weaving. We stick this kalush into the ground. This tip is sharp. We install it in three places. Approximately two three sheep's wool is used for one alasha. Yarn is made from it, then it is dyed and processed. To make a thread from the wool about three sheep is needed, so we put a stake in three places. Choose the place you need. First you have to do the calculations. What ornaments do you need? How many threads should be in a row? What do you want to make? What will be the width and color? You need to fold the ornament. You have to count the threads. After all these calculations, pass the threads between the stakes and do it in a circle. Making alasha demands a great deal of talent. It is created by people with broad perspectives and good taste. One thing should be mentioned. This art is passed down from father to son, generation after generation, and there is no separate school where this craft is taught. Our grandparents picked up skills from their mothers and handed them down to their daughters and daughters-in-law, and so it went on. This is time-consuming. On average, it takes 10-15 days. If the carpet's area is vast, it could take a month or even more. You spend a lot of time and sometimes hurt your eyesight. But one thing makes me happy. This object represents our spiritual wealth. This is our original national craft, depicting our patterns and ornaments. The most important element of Alasha is its patterns and ornaments. Each pattern has a distinct meaning and each ornament has a specific purpose. Different regions use them in their own way. Speaking about the history of ornaments, academician Alke Margulam stated that geometric figures in Kazakh ornaments are typical of the second millennium BC. According to him, various Bronze Age monuments have been discovered on Kazakhstan's land, including ceramic objects with geometric designs comparable to those found on Kazakh carpets. Ornaments have an important part in traditional Kazakh society since they reveal the nation's worldview, life circumstance, and identity.
We have been weaving this carpet since we were children. Then we wanted to draw various things on them. We even wanted to draw a deer. Our grandmother sat next to us and kept an eye on us. You won't draw the deer. Make a spider, she said. What for? I scoffed. Why is he needed? My grandmother then explained that this is the name of the ornament and that it's very important. Girls were given such carpets so that they can weave their own homes like spiders. As a result, the house should have such a decoration. A spider can create a home from a web in one night. Kazakh women dream that they, like spiders, could build their own cozy homes. I'm now telling my students about it. I do not teach the history of ornaments, but I do share what I know during my work. Smart girls are quickly to grasp the meaning. The composition of Alasha ornaments depends on the technique of carpet making. For example, the ornaments Koshkar Muyus, Ram's Horns, Kos Muyus, Paired Horns, Sonar Muyus, One Horn are convenient for Tirme Alasha when the threads are grouped by color. The Kejim Tiru technique made it possible to decorate the product with patterns Ashamai, saddle, Baldak, armrest, Alakort, warm. They also use it on embroidery to avoid jinxing it and allowing it to expand and thrive. For example, the ornaments Khoshkarmius, Somius, and Sanarmius are well known. They are linked in a chain as a symbol of people's life, being close and being together. Our ornaments and patterns frequently represent fertility. Fertility has such a strong symbolism. When you enter such yurts, which are covered with handicrafts, you experience a burst of strength and inspiration. This is hardly coincidence in my opinion. This is a mysterious and fascinating world. This ornaments truly provide strength and nourishment to the soul. Alasha is a vibrant product that can be created in a variety of ways. It is classified into numerous sorts according on how it is woven, what is unique about it, and why it is made. For example, Kakpa Alasha is created by weaving Alasha with multicolored threads and alternating colors. Varieties include Khazal Baskur, Takhta, Tirmi, and Tus Alasha in various regions of Kazakhstan. Alasha comes in a variety of forms. There are Kospa Alasha, Jolai Alasha, and Kakhpa Alasha, for example. Threads are constantly struck in while Kakhpa Alasha is woven. We do not draw patterns and decorations. As a result, it is monotonous. This is the simplest method. Then there is the Termi Alasha. We are now making Termi Alasha. There's an ornament here. We use mathematics to lay out each decoration. Every thread is counted. Gilbao, for example, can be made from 11, 15, or 17 threads. Baskur will be wider. In other words, about 30, 40 centimeters. This will necessitate the use of 50 threads. Each thread will have two pairs for a total of 100 threads. Then you must weave it using 500 threads. You must count from top to bottom. There will be 420 threads plus another 420. You think about the desired width, thickness, and ornamentation. You must first calculate everything, and then start working. Kazakh women wove alasha with great care. They worked so meticulously that one carpet took months to complete. Because this art required them to conduct extensive creative searches, it instilled in them patience and tenacity. The craftswomen did not allow themselves to make mistakes or become confused while working. That is why Alasha, which was weaved centuries ago in the Kazakh steppes, has endured to this day, keeping its original appearance and carrying fundamental values. It takes as much time as you want to put into making one Alasha if you want to finish as quickly as possible, you may have to sit for 12 
13-15 hours per day. You must then work without getting up. For example, if alasha is 9 meters, 8 meters and 20 meters in length, I heard that before the alasha's length reached 50 meters. After you have placed two stakes, you must wrap their ends. You will place it on that stake once you have done weaving the side. The unfinished segment will be on the opposite end of the thread. It is lengthy when loosened. It all relies on the product's length. This one will be 7-8 meters long. You can finish it in a week if you don't take any breaks during work. To make Alasha a special machine, threats and auxiliary tools are enough. The Kazakhs were able to create a loom from sticks and branches. This is known as Siru Agashu. It is required in order to identify all of the threads stretched for work. How many threads are there? Do you want 50, 100 or 500 threads? Using this tool, we separate them all with notches because the threads cannot slide here while we knit. We stretch the same number of threads from them and above, four or five pieces each, onto siru. This way we won't be confused. This is what we call Adargo's instrument. It must have a piece of wood like that. I use this briefly, however, there should be an adarho tool. This piece of wood has the potential to fall out and disconnect. There is a control thread in this case, you raise it up and extract it. This thread controls everything and prevents the threads from tangling. That is its task. Alasha is also woven in other Turkic-speaking countries. The craft of carpet weaving, for example, is very similar to ours among the Uzbeks, Kyrgyz, Karakalpaks and Turkmens. Their products differ only in pattern and ornamentation from Kazakh products. The Kazakh word Alasha is derived from the word Ala, motli, which refers to a carpet with a variety of colored threads. Kazakh women made felt sarmak, Tuskiis, Tikimit, and Alasha. Camel or sheep wool was used for this. Alasha can be used to cover one's feet or to decorate the walls of one's home. Gabilin digin yentul bizning Alasha nun gurturgoy, brak bul Francia dashikanda. Tapestry is a type of Alasha. However, it was made in France. The walls were called in France and throughout Europe. As a result, these rugs were hanged on the walls, and because they were still crocheted and hung on the walls, they portrayed religious paintings. This is how people were educated. As a result, it became well known. It is referred to be European art in our country. These are the tapestries I made with my husband. If you look attentively, you can see a woman on a horse with children behind her. The horse is long and so is the result. It is made up of different parts. The kids are wearing owl feathers on their heads. They are encircled by spirits in the form of eyes on the yellow step. Each of our tapestries represents a different philosophy. Because so much work has been done by hand, it must have its own philosophy. To be honest, this craft has yet to be properly recognized. But our sisters and mothers in the country's southern parts do not abandon it. They nurture and teach others to this day. One of those craftswomen mentioned that she would like to teach this craft to a teacher because he will be able to train 30 individuals in turn. In this sense, we must continue our efforts to safeguard our national ideals. I believe this is what we should do now. We see that today's young people are developing positive perspectives on this issue. We're discussing a brand. Scal caps first deputed the year before last. Horses are no longer worn. They're ethnostyle clothing. Why not begin adorning our homes with such lovely alasha? 
It would be even better if we could convey its significance and explain the symbolism. We would set an excellent example to the following generation. This craft teaches us patience and endurance. Kazakhs presented Alasha as a gift to honored guests because a great deal of effort has gone into it. Such an item was extremely valuable and held a special position in Kazakh national culture. Making Alasha is a challenging endeavor. As a result, it was knitted together by various masters. According to an ancient tradition, Kilim Asar was held, during which other women were called to assist the craftswomen. Today's youth are only now becoming interested in this subject. Previously, even clothes were woven from Tirmi Alasha. However, people had forgotten that such clothing existed. Shapans were made from Tirmi Alasha and Shikpian were worn. Shikpian was knitted with even thin threads spun from silky smooth camel wool following the Alasha technology. However, such Shikpian was only worn by bees, high-ranking officials, and other respected persons above 45, who ruled the community and possessed authority. Women, however, did not wear the shikpen. They used to say that shikpen are worn by people with rank. They were indeed worn by people in positions of power. They were made from the same materials as alasha. When it comes to clothing, we're talking about doing the old with a new twist. However, we must consider what designs and ornamentation we use at the same time. There are ornaments that can be worn on clothing and ornaments that cannot be worn on the regular clothes. A modern object should be very relevant and popular. To make such things, we must go back to our origins, to our roots, because a tree that lacks roots will never grow. Our foundation is solid. Resentment can awaken from time to time, but then I think to myself, thank God our roots are strong. We will not fall, we will manage. Modern children spend the majority of their time on the internet or on their cell phones. We're all doing it, but I believe that if we practice the craft that our forefathers taught us, we will be able to advance much more quickly. I mean, not only creative progress, but also our ability to think, because this is a craft involving geometry and counting. Our youngsters would be able to perform calculations fast. I believe that those who study and advance this field, our ethnographers, are working for a good cause. We're making progress, and interest in this craft is growing. We say that we do not require a diploma. Our degree runs in our veins. It came to us from our forefathers, our grandfathers. Art is in the blood of Kazakhs. We don't need a diploma or to go to school for this. It's sufficient to pay attention, establish a goal for yourself, and you can accomplish everything on your own, because it runs in our veins. This must be shown overseas in order to demonstrate that we are worthy competitors. Kazakh art is distinct and one of a kind. Just look at Alasha, our rugs and patchwork quilts. What secrets do they hide? <laughs> Crafts having a thousand-year heritage are priceless treasures of the Kazakh people. They are rich of philosophical ideas, based on deep knowledge and experience, and they are endowed with beauty and magical power. The Kazakhs were extremely fortunate to have inherited such wealth. It is now the duty of everyone to enjoy, protect and pass it on to the next generation.